there's always an air of subjectivity where your experience can almost override almost like um you're in kind of bro science perhaps mm. or or even it's it, it might be thought of as a deification of the so-called science largely by those who are on the fringe or indeed outside of the sciences who look up to the sciences and think oh that's some kind of magics that's being done people don't realize how bad the science is sorry about that Ted. um the science is the state of the science on many topics in as they as that regards to the function of a human body most of the science in, in most of those fields is just rubbish like human nutrition science is garbage precisely because it is ethically impossible to do properly controlled experiments to establish cause and effect so people can get hold of a bone a hypothesis that because there is actually no evidence to either really truly support their hypothesis or to dismiss it it's a bone they can have a whole academic career running along going look at my lovely shiny bone and it becomes an area that is personed by people whose real sole purpose is not the not the information of people, it's not the advancement of knowledge, it's not some higher goal or you know anything like that. These are not high priests of knowledge that are scientists. These are men and women who are working for probably 80 hours a week most of them to get everything you need to get done as an academic and trust me i'm talking from experience i used to be one um they are constantly required to go above and beyond all the time most people don't understand that an academic working in an institution doing a research program has to find the funding source for that program as well they have to go and find the sponsor for it sort of thing so they have to keep that client happy in terms of their outputs and what they're saying. There's an adage out there that 98% of scientists agree with their source of funding. You know, let's be honest about it. These are, these are people working 80 hours a week for most of them, $80,000 a year and under. They're not working for some higher ideal. They're not some kind of priest of the forward, forwarding of knowledge, is what I'm saying. These are flawed human beings struggling on middling salaries, doing the closest approximation to actual science that is possible with human physiological or health outcomes as your focal point, as your raison d'etre, as it were. Because you cannot do experiments on human beings. You will not get that past an ethics committee. They go, we have to do prospective cohort studies, which are just nonsense and have no ability to inform us on cause and effect at all. We have to do small scale, poorly controlled um approximations of clinically controlled investigations because to actually impose the right controls on a group of research subjects and for a long enough period of time to make this valid it's just even if we could get that past ethics which we never will the resources the practicalities the time frames to get any of this kind of work done you won't find any studies on human nutrition science that went on for 60 years. Mm, it's who's, not feasible, is it? Well, who's, who's going to do a study for 60 years? Because at the no, end no. of the day, well, the other Should thing here is you, you don't get directly paid for publishing research works as an academic. You get paid. But you can bet the number of publications you get during your career and at various stages during your career dictates the level of seniority and pay that you will be offered. It's, 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 there's, there's a close, it's not the only factor, but it's a pretty important factor. It's the publish or perish thing in, in academia. Mm. So 
what would be, even if you had the money for a 60-year-long study of people under control and you had the ethics to keep people under proper control for 60 years, i.e. locked in laboratories, which is completely never going to happen. But let's just ignore that reality for the sake of the story. Let's say you got that and you're going to do this 60-year study. Or instead of publishing something in 60 years when I'm probably dead, let alone my career's finished, why don't I go out and do a 10, 12, 15, 100 shoddy, short-term, pseudoscientific, poorly controlled works and pull those off as science, feather my own nest, get myself up to the, to the highest levels of, of academia and um, sell my soul, basically, to that industry. Give up any hope, actually, of this this um, utopian ideal that we're ever going to get the answers here. We'll be able to actually because it's just when when someone says, "Oh, yeah, that's a great argument. Show me the study." There aren't any studies that show anything one way or the other. Oh, I could show you fifty of, studies. I could show you a hundred studies. Yeah, I'm sure you could, and you and I could sit down. With each one of those hundred studies, if we had enough time, we don't. And I could show you exactly what's wrong with every single one of them within minutes. Because I've done a bit of science in my life. Ted, you're losing your head, son. Perhaps we'll give we'll give up on the on the crown for today. You'll have to be crownless. Sorry about that, Ted. I'm fiddling while I talk, you see. <laughs> I'm always fiddling with Ted's ends. Yeah. Knobs, heads. Yeah. Ted loves it. I, I bet he does. He's got no other choice, bitch. All right, what's next? Yeah, I, want, so yeah, I, guess, I um, guess what I'm saying is don't trust the science, kids. I agree, yeah. I mean, just on that point, there's... I won't do any mudslinging or naming names, but you could probably work out who it was by what I'm about to say, but mm-hmm. there's a researcher that put out the idea that we need, I think it's something like 45 sets per muscle group per week or something like that, something very, very, very high volume. Mm-hmm. Something which is way beyond what any one of us would really do, if that's got any sense. Yeah. Um, but what's funny is, in his studies, in one of the studies actually, sorry, he said, I didn't need to blind myself as a researcher when I was performing the study, mm-hmm. um, because it wasn't necessary. I'm above reproach. And I was like, that's what, <laughs> this is what a load of nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh, Honestly, yeah. that's, what, that's what he said pretty much. Yeah. Um, and all of his his peers in the um, the community, so people that kind of use his information, and cite his references, and this sort of thing, will say, "Oh yeah, I think I think it, it makes sense. Yeah, I like his approach." This anyway, but they're not doing forty five sets per muscle group. They just say that is good, but they don't deploy it themselves. So I think, like you said, exercise science in particular is, is very lost, and people don't necessarily agree with what they might um, be putting out there as absolute fact. You know? Mm, yeah. It's the authority with which people claim a position, and it's the nature of falsely promoting in their own minds, and then indeed demanding other people believe that the science somehow is some kind of inviolate canon, some kind of good word written down by the Lord God himself or something that ergo is true because some researchers somewhere wrote a sentence which they've read at the end of a conclusion statement of a paper without engaging with reading the paper because let's face it most people don't have the skills to read a paper even if you know quite a few big words you actually can't then necessarily competently read a research paper you actually have to understand the processes which have been undertaken to be a competent, critical reader of a paper. So, I mean, the other response, other than, you know, why bother, because the science is crap, the other argument that you can use when someone says, oh, show me the paper, is like, well, I, I could, absolutely, but do you have the skills to understand it? I could sit down with you for half an hour for each paper to go through each one and show it to you. But some people don't actually even have the intellectual capacity to even get the most basic tenants anyway. And as such, the discussion is a waste of time. That's, yeah. that's an unfortunate reality. 
It might sound racist. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's not. It's not a, yeah. a racially determined thing. I mean, there is a range of intelligence in human beings. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's accurate. I mean, my brother, for example, he's um, not scientifically well read. But if I explain the logic around what a study is or is not saying, he's like, yeah, it makes complete sense. But he's not going to read a paper and understand all these funny words mean and association and this, that, and the other. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, at, at the most basic tenet is this. If you could not repeat the statistical analysis of the data set collected by those authors and get the same result yourself, if you do not have the skills to do those statistics, and get the answer, you are not competent to read that paper and comment upon it to anybody else, period. That's a basic requirement because the inference of science is statistical. It's an empirical yeah. inference. It's a, it's a, it's a probability-based statement. If you can't make those calculations yourself, why on earth do you think you're competent to speak publicly about what that paper does or doesn't say. That that always sure. amazes me when people start doing that. Or even or even worse, say the papers say things when actually they don't, or indeed state the exact opposite, for example. Yeah. Mm. That's, that's happened recently, hasn't it? It has happened recently. I'll give you, you know, there are a couple of examples of that. Uh, you can you can go to my fine fine science based YouTube channel for those. You'll laugh and laugh and laugh until you stop. 